Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the uh, third part of a July tour video that I'm uh, doing. Uh, I did this part over here uh, to the uh, right of the camera uh, in the first one, and then what you can see here back here in the background up around the uh, front of the house in the second one. Now I'm gonna do uh, the left-hand side of the fence in an area uh, that's right here along the road. Uh, this project was, the front yard project is less than a year old. There was a giant maple out here that was taken down and then all of the things you're seeing here, the turf, uh, the sidewalk, uh, and everything that's been planted, except for two or three pieces that you'll see in this video were already here um, um, on this, uh, in this landscape before I got started. So let's get started. Uh, one of the things I've pointed out in both of the first two videos is there are a lot of annuals, uh, like this vinca uh, out here, that uh, are partly here just holding some space while the perennial things that have been planted uh, have a year to kind of sit here and uh, develop some roots and next year will be bigger, better, fuller. So I will have less annuals in future seasons uh, than, I have, uh, than I have this year. So again, that's a uh, vinca on the edge. Uh, there's a monarda here uh, or bee balm. Uh, has, oh, it has started blooming. Uh, there's, there's the flower on, uh, on that bee balm. Uh, this is a bee bombs a native uh, to the to the southeast and uh, again when it goes to sleep it comes back next year it'll be bigger better and uh, and fuller there's a, a dwarf uh, holly uh, in the back um, a Japanese holly it's just meant to give me something when when some of when these things die back uh, in the winter time uh, I'm number one I'm going to add a few more evergreen things uh, but that holly back here is meant to be one of those first evergreen things but uh, there'll be more added to this space because unfortunately all of these perennial things are going to die back to the ground or annual things are going to die uh, completely. Uh, there's a, an agastache uh, in the back. This one's called Arizona Sunset. I've used this one in several places. You're going to see a lot of, uh, a lot of those uh, in this video. Uh, it's one of my uh, favorite things. It's also one of the hummingbirds' uh, favorite uh, things. Uh, I have a hummingbird on one on the other side of the fence. A good portion, a good portion of the day, he's visiting that. There's a Mexican sage uh, in this spot, and Mexican sage is super marginal here. If I have a very mild winter, this thing will come back. If not, it will die. I can get if I want another Mexican sage next year, generally I can find one of these in like a four inch pot pretty inexpensively. This won't bloom until late, late summer or early fall, which is kind of nice uh, about Mexican sage. I've got an aster next to it. Same thing, this is a fall blooming, a fall blooming aster. Uh, so I've, I've put some things out here intentionally that uh, will give me some color th throughout the season. Uh, there are, um, this is a powwow white echinacea these are newly planted i think there's three or four of them in here so next year these will be quite large i mean that, that's the way these operate uh, they'll uh, um, only grow a little bit the first season give you a few flowers and then next year you know fill up an entire space this salvia right here is called new dimension rose it has been very long bloomed i've had it in this space for uh, a, just a few months it's grown quite a bit and it's been flowering like crazy bees are on it uh, pretty consistently but it's actually grown quite a bit more aggressively than I would have uh, than I would have suspected it was a very small pot as well and now it's two feet wide by two feet wide I've got some cosmos um, that seems to be defective in some way I've got cosmos on the other side of the fence that is just in absolute full bloom they were all seeded at the same time this thing's growing fantastic and it just won't flower and uh, you know I've had my truck parked here and I don't know if, you know, some of it was, it stretched a little bit because of, you know, having maybe a little bit of morning shade on it. Um, but any, anyway, uh, it, it will bloom at some point or, or it will come out. It uh, does, doesn't really matter. There's a May night salvia that it's leaning on. And May night salvia is one of my favorite salvias. But for us in the southeast, it typically only blooms in the late spring. And then I'll get a few residual flowers. Here's one trying to uh, form uh, right here. But that's kind of a medium to dark purple uh, salvia uh, one of the nice things about it is you know when it finishes blooming it's still a nice looking uh, perennial plant again that cosmos has got to be uh, gotten off of it there's a salvia next to it called betsy's choice that hasn't started flowering either so again i'm a little suspicious that my truck having been here but i'm using this truck for ongoing projects in fact i gotta go to the dump now with it uh, 
but uh, obviously it's prevented this from opening up. So I'm gonna give these, they'll have a lot more light without the truck sitting here. Uh, there's some Leatris uh, that were done in a video uh, earlier in the season. I, I, I started these early in containers and uh, they just bloomed like mad. They're in three or four different places uh, in the front yard garden space here. Uh, there's a Verbena bonariensis in the back. I've got these in several places uh, in the landscape. In fact, there's one on the other end of the opposite, the opposite end of the fence, and then one in the backyard. I love these because uh, they flower all season. So you get, uh, you know, I saw a hummingbird on the one in the back, the back garden yesterday. The bees love them. And then uh, as the seeds form on these, you get goldfinches. And so, in fact, I went for coffee this morning and when I drove back up here, there were goldfinches flying off of these as I was pulling back in. This is an aster mix um, called Tower Custom Mix. I get these seeds from Johnny Seed. This is the second year in a row I've used them. These are Chinese asters. Uh, here's a, a purple one here. You don't know what you're getting in the mix, uh, but there's pinks and whites and purples. I really love these. They can be cut. They just continue to bloom uh, all season long and they'll get, you know, maybe in this height range uh, during the season, but again, they can just be deadheaded and just keep giving you flowers. Moving over to the uh, inside of the fence, uh, I did a video for uh, how I went about constructing uh, this fence. I have two uh, caps on the uh, entryway here that are actually have actually have lights on them uh, in the evening, a little solar panel on top of it. There's just copper caps on the other ones. This fence is for nothing more than to, do, to basically create two garden spaces for me. If I didn't have this fence in the middle of it, I wouldn't have a backdrop for those things from the street view, and I wouldn't have a backdrop from the front porch um, a view this way. Some of the things I'm planting along here are with intent to come up over the top of the fence, and this agapanthus uh, being one of those things. Uh, this is a uh, pretty vigorous uh, growing variety. This is indigo frost, has the uh, purple on the back of the flower and the white uh, in the center. Uh, these are good uh, newer varieties that will continue to bloom through the summer. As, uh, as they fade and start to form seed heads, they get cut back and new clusters. Um, new clusters come on them. There's a Gerber daisy uh, planted uh, to the left of the entryway. And uh, I've just expanded this, this bed in front of the uh, agapanthus uh, and, and cut the zoysia back a little bit. Something else will be added uh, in front of those agapanthus. Don't know what that is uh, quite yet. Uh, one of my just all time favorite shrubs uh, this is a caryopteris called First Choice. Uh, I grew this one at my nursery uh, years ago. It's an almost purple flowering caryopteris. Uh, this is a late, late summer or fall flowering shrub. And so, you know, most of our shrubs, I talk about this a lot, you know, most shrubs are, you know, spring flowering into early summer, but not into fall typically. So a lot of what I've done out here, uh, you'll notice is, uh, the things that aren't blooming, typically for me, I will try to find later blooming things. It's so easy to have spring flowering things, um, but more difficult to have fall flowering things. I didn't show an anemone that's on the other side, a fall blooming anemone that's on the other side of the fence either. So lots of things with intent on fall flowers here. Uh, there's a whole uh, collection of Agastache uh, in this area. I'll put the uh, names up uh, on the screen. Again, uh, hummingbird out here, these little delicate pinkish flowers on these. It's amazing the hummingbird um, would be drawn to that, but they just absolutely love them. Another great thing about these is the, uh, the deer don't eat them, the rabbits don't eat them. Kind of an indestructible little uh, perennial plant that uh, um, you just, no fuss, no fuss kind of plant. Uh, next up is this uh, Empress of China dogwood. Uh, I've shown this thing many, many times. Uh, it was in full flower probably for six weeks or so, very long bloomed. Uh, just a great, just a great specimen plant. Uh, it's been in the ground. This one's been in the ground for uh, a year and a half now, I guess. And uh, it's put on quite a bit of growth this season. Didn't really grow last year. In fact, it was a little drought stressed, but uh, came through that and it's put on quite a bit of growth this year, but this is an evergreen dogwood. And again, it's super, super long bloomed. I uh, just love this. Uh, just love this small tree. Uh, it can probably, it'll probably end up ultimately getting about 15 feet high here. It will have to be limbed up a little bit to not interfere with the turf and the other plants that are around it uh, in the future. Uh, next up, as we uh, move around, you'll see 
again, and I showed this in the first two videos, along these front bed edges, I do have a mix of a few annuals uh, planted. So there's, again, you're seeing this gomfrina, you're seeing the, um, the celosia here, and uh, what else is here? There's a, oh, there's a couple pentas. There's a pink penta here, and a white one uh, right here that's not really showing, well, there, yeah, there's right there, showing a little bit of color, but these are all to invite pollinators into the yard. And again, all of these newly planted shrubs and all of these newly planted perennials, I'm just filling the gaps in between them until they um, mature, uh, mature a little bit. If you watch the first two tour videos and you continue to watch them as I move into the uh, backyard space, again, you're gonna see lots and lots of salvia varieties. Uh, there's one here called uh, Caradonna uh, that is, uh, has purple spikes. Uh, it's been pretty long, uh, pretty long flowered uh, in that space. And uh, again, I don't know how many salvia varieties I have. I probably should shoot a video just based just on salvia uh, at some point for this landscape. This is a uh, new butterfly bush, hasn't been released yet. It's called High Five, and it's actually a dwarf butterfly bush, but it's tall and narrow, or, or, or it's super narrow. So a super narrow dwarf one. Uh, so this one should be interesting. All the growth is very vertical on it. Uh, it's a um, kind of a light uh, lavender color. Um, you could probably call it pink or lavender if you wanted to, but uh, it's going to, uh, I've seen these uh, in, you know, from the nursery where they're just super, super upright and narrow. So interesting for me in this little two tenths of an acre lot to find things that I can get lots and lots of summer color on, but not take up a lot of ground space. The other dwarf butterfly bushes tend to, you know, splay out and get wider. Uh, behind it is a, uh, a variegated Daphne. There's four Daphne planted in this yard. The last tour video, uh, I showed the uh, variegated wild, wild winter Daphne. This is just Daphne adora uh, variegata. Here, this is probably the weakest of the four that I've got planted, but it does have new growth on it. It's, it's happy enough. Uh, these were planted using that expanded slate uh, in the ground because my clay soil loves to kill Daphne. But one of my favorite plants, late winter flowering, super, super, super fragrant. I've got a hibiscus planted uh, back here. Of course, these flowers only last for a day and it's so new that it hasn't had many flowers. Let's see if I can open this up enough, but you can see the inside of the flower right there. It's put on tons of growth already and it's absolutely loaded uh, with flower buds. Again, this was put on the back side of this fence to come up over the fence and be seen from the roadside and from the uh, and from the house side. And uh, let's see, there was another butterfly bush that was already here on the lot. And this one has swallowtails on it all day. I don't know what variety this is. As many butterfly bush varieties as I grew over the years, I actually don't know what this one, this one is. It's not like Black Knight, it's, it's much lighter color than that. So again, I don't know, uh, but uh, it's been a great variety because it's very, very upright and uh, fits this space great. And again, every afternoon, it's got swallowtails. In this large container, uh, I got this container from Michael Carr Designs, did a video at his place uh, in Atlanta in his showroom uh, earlier this year. Uh, beautiful, beautiful container. Uh, there's some Asiatic jasmine coming over the ledge here uh, and uh, looks great weeping down over it. And then uh, in the, the centerpiece of the container is a golden Oakland holly. You'll see another one of these in the backyard that I've got in a little bit too much shade, so it's stretching a bit. A lot more sun for this one. And so the color is, the color is great on it, but I think it's a great addition to this space. I needed something like a container here to, uh, you know, to give me some kind of instant, instant height. There is some dwarf uh, spirea uh, in this spot right here. There's three uh, little bonnie spirea. Uh, they've just kind of finished blooming uh, at this point, but they're kind of clusters of medium to dark pink flowers on little bonnie. This one can be kept very small, a uh, good addition to this space because it's really not going to get hardly any taller than this. It was already been pruned one time uh, since it finished uh, flowering. The bees are starting to show up here on the edge of the uh, bed. You can see they'll work this gomfrina. They'll work this gomfrina like crazy. And of course, all the salvias and everything. Uh, you know, they're working, they're working it all. There's another epimedium that was planted uh, back in this area. This is a uh, late winter 
through middle spring flowering uh, perennial that uh, has yellow flowers on it. Flowers are beautiful, but I also just love the look of this plant. Where, where this epimedium's planted, um, from about where my hands are, uh, it's super sunny right there, and then it just totally gets cut off about here, and then there's a maple behind me that kind of, so everything you're seeing from about where I'm sitting in this bed and behind me is in the shade, or in at least partial shade. Moving further back into this bed, I really like how this uh, corner is uh, coming together. I just like, I like all the pieces that are, you know, the kind of the backdrop to what I'm doing you know, stepping down toward the lawn, toward the flowering things in the sunnier area. Uh, I like all of these pieces back here a lot. Um, I've got a white shishi uh, camellia. Uh, this is a, uh, I've got, there are basically two dwarf um, camellia sasanquas here. There's a white shishi, and then this is light pink shishi. I think light pink shishi is being released next year. There might be some availability on it already. White shishi has already been uh, released uh, for a while. It's kind of hard to find this plant. Everybody wants it. Uh, it's a beautiful double white flower. These Camellia sasanquas bloom for me mid-October into November and into December. Uh, the uh, white shishi is budding up already. I don't see I don't see any on the pink shishi yet, but it's still growing. Uh, normally, you'll get about six or eight inches of growth. Oh no, I do see it um, on these on these Camellia sasanquas, and then they'll set the buds for fall. Uh, behind it, I've got one called Crimson and Clover. Also one that hasn't been uh, released yet. All of these are from the uh, same plant breeder in uh, South Alabama named Bobby Green, um, good friend of mine as well. So uh, I love these three camellias in this spot. Again, they'll all bloom uh, in the fall. Uh, I, do, I have a Joe Pye weed uh, back here that is about to start flowering. This is a native, native perennial and uh, the flowers are, starting, are gonna start opening on it very soon. Uh, this one is about six feet high, as you can see. Uh, I've got a dwarf one in the backyard. If you continue to watch these tour videos, you'll see what a dwarf one looks like in comparison to this. It's literally half the height, and that one's almost in full bloom uh, in the back already. Uh, there's a Shasta viburnum uh, to the right, and I've talked several times about I don't, as many varieties as you're looking at in this landscape, in this very small landscape. This is, again, this is maybe four or 500 square feet you're looking at today of bed space. Uh, I don't want plants that are six and eight feet wide. And the Shasta viburnum is doing that and more. And so I'm gonna have to be pruning on this some. I'm definitely gonna go ahead and take some of the height out of it. It's a beautiful plant, don't want it gone, but I am gonna, you know, I can't let it continue to, uh, you know, get another four feet wider in this space. It's just gonna eat up too much. One other thing about this Shasta viburnum, this is actually one that was from my nursery uh, that was left over when I had closed my uh, nursery. And so, you know, it is one that's, you know, fr from that time of my life. Uh, uh, behind it is a uh, royal purple smoke bush that was already here when I moved in. I pruned this very, very hard in a video uh, this past winter down to about four feet in height. And you can see it's already 10 feet again. It's always going to have this problem of having to grow toward the sun a bit and because of this maple tree that's behind me here. So I think pretty much every winter, this is gonna have to be done. It's gonna have to be cut low. You can actually cut these all the way to the ground and they'll recover from it. I think I like cutting it around that four foot height because I'd like the, you know, the fact that the foliage is around the edge as well. And uh, by keeping some of that, I think it looks a little better not to be naked, you know, down at that old trunk because it's also leaning weirdly. Uh, and so, Again, a uh, great little backdrop uh, piece. Doesn't have quite as much color as it would have if it had a little more sun on it, but it's still, still quite beautiful. Uh, behind it is an abelia that was also here uh, on, the, uh, on the property before. Blooms like crazy. Uh, it's in, again, it's in the park shade. These abelia will bloom in the park shade, full sun, doesn't matter. Bees are covering this thing all day. I've got one working it right back over here. It's early in the morning and they're still dew on all this stuff, so they're not as active, but uh, they work this abelia all day long, so it's not going to go anywhere because uh, uh, that's a big part of my uh, landscape, as you guys can tell, is inviting uh, wildlife uh, into the landscape. Just a few more things to point out in this bed before the sun comes up over this oak tree across the street and runs me out of this, this front yard space. There are a lot of other things planted in this space that are small now that will take up more space in the future. There are several hellebores. Uh, that are tiny now that were bought as, you know, in little cork pots. 
I've got some, uh, I've got some uh, fetid uh, hellebores on the other side of, uh, uh, on the other side of the smoke bush uh, that I'll put up uh, in the video while you're watching. There's some black mondo back here. This black mondo grass will spread, but much slower than other mondo grass. I almost consider other mondo grass a weed, but the black mondo is very easy to control. It's almost self-controlling. It, it grows so slowly. Uh, there uh, is a, uh, uh, a sedum, a dwarf sedum here called Ogon uh, that I'm going to uh, divide as it grows and uh, tuck it in between rocks, uh, just like it is done there, and let that spread. I've got, there's some uh, uh, red thyme that I didn't show in the last video planted next to this rock. Same thing, I'll be able to divide this and use it in between rocks and stones in pathways uh, around the uh, landscape. I've planted lots of these little kinds of ground covers that, uh, uh, again, I'll be able to, as they grow and establish themselves, I'll be able to divide them. Uh, there's a distillium here called cast in bronze, and it will get wider uh, in time. This one's called cast in bronze because all of the new growth is a bronze. Uh, uh, it has bronze new foliage all spring. I probably have this one in a little too much shade to keep that coloration uh, on it. Um, but when it was when it was flushing in the spring, it had that beautiful color. I love this plant. I mean, it only gets you know it's only going to get or I can keep it you know somewhere around two feet in height, and it will eventually fill about a three foot by three foot. Um, uh, size space here it's evergreen it does bloom blooms are insignificant it blooms right along the stems with kind of a reddish flower really just grown for this evergreen foliage and this kind of blue green uh hue to it uh when it's not growing and when it's growing again has that bronze coloration in the fence video uh, i showed how these uh, three panels on this side were made too they're exactly the same as the front except for i uh, tapered them down instead of up just to have some difference in them but again this is you know, just to differentiate, give me some sort of backdrop to these uh, shrubs and, you know, the plants that are going, that are going in. Obviously, it's not a fence. You can just walk through it uh, anywhere. Uh, there are a couple of uh, hosta that have been planted on this side. There were on that side uh, as well that I showed. This one's called curly fries. It's actually put on some growth already, but typically, like I said in the last tour video, uh, it takes a winter with these hosta to have them go to sleep and then come back. Uh, there's a camellia in this spot, it's absolutely one of my favorite camellias. It's called Lemon Glow. I let it get a little dry at one point and it shed a few leaves. And so uh, it's a little thinner actually than it was uh, when I first planted it, but it's put on some growth recently. And uh, I think I'll see a few flowers on it next spring. Camellia japonicas can take a little while to settle in and, and get going. Uh, eventually it'll be a big piece back here though. Uh, lemon glow is white with kind of a yellow hue to it. And that's, that, so lemon glow is the, kind of the perfect name for it. There's an elephant ear in this spot that uh, is probably going to get, probably going to end up gigantic uh, over the course of this season. And then there's a, a clethra here called Bigfoot that I'm going to allow to come up pretty daggone tall here uh, and, and fill this entire space where I'm standing. Uh, won't grow a whole lot. It's just gone in the ground. And so I, I don't know when that video went up, maybe maybe three months ago, four months ago when I planted it. So first season in the ground next year to put on uh, quite a bit of uh, growth. There's a rhodia that I was actually gotten from a, a person who was selling a house in the neighborhood. I've got a couple other variegated rhodia in the backyard. So when we get back there, I'll talk more about, uh, about rhodia. Rhodia like cast iron plants when they're putting on their new growth in the spring, you can take off some of the old pieces. So that's what I'll do. That's what I'll do with those. There's a jack in the pulpit that was plant, is planted here. And you can see the beautiful uh, beautiful leaves on it, <laughs> uh, but it's uh, fading back to the ground at this point. They come up in the spring, do their thing, and then they uh, die back to the ground pretty quickly. But that's, that's what's left of it uh, from this season. So that's the third and final tour uh, for this front yard space. Again, I broke it down into three pieces because each of these videos has been quite long with the number of, uh, with, the no with the variety that's you know in this front yard space. Backyard is exactly the same, so I'm gonna break it out as well and uh, show you in detail all the things that have gone into that space as well. Thank you guys for following along with these videos. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that little bell notification so you're alerted when I upload videos. And again, thanks for following along.